Hello everybody, here's Franco La Muerte. Welcome to my little home studio. In this video tutorial I'll introduce you to Arteria's Spark Creative Drum Machine, which is a rhythmic creation center advanced rhythm box type, combining as sound source the analogic emulation power, the physical modeling as well as the classic samples. It's all optimized to favor easiness and creative speed. Right here on my right is found Spark's physical module. It's a dedicated controller giving the possibility to control with much interactivity the Spark standalone or plugin that we can see here, by the way, on the screen. With Spark, it's very easy to parameter and or to record on the fly various rhythms, some automations, pattern changes, to apply filter effects, to slice, to roll, even to change the kit and more so, and this without ever using the computer's mouse. We'll see later how the associated software enables if we want to go more in depth as far as musical creation. But for now, let's stay essentially on the physical controller and, without further ado, let's get a global start on Arturia's Spark. Before moving forward with the Spark software, make sure your Spark physical controller is connected in USB and if you use USB extension cable like me, I advise you also to feed your Spark with a 9 volt adapter. During the first launching, the Spark software would probably show Spark project using the first 8D Studio Drums kit by default. A project contains a kit plus the associated patterns, including the automations. So, if I press on the play button, it's the A1 pattern that we hear with the 80s Studio Drum kit. This section here contains the 64 patterns that are possible to record on Spark, all in four banks named A, B, C and D, each bank contains 16 patterns. So, by clicking, for example, on C12, once the A1 pattern has completed its cycle, the sequence has the C12 pattern heard and so on for the other patterns. Let's stop the sequence and see rather how to program and record our own patterns with a different kit. Let's go in Load and choose Empty Project. This assures us that in this section there won't be any pre-recorded patterns in the pattern banks. We can already select here one of the many factory kits configured by Arturia or just open a completely empty project without kits or patterns. Let's take, for instance, the ACID kit. If we press on play, we see well the step sequencer's LEDs move around left to right but we don't hear any sound. It's normal. Let's stop the pattern. Let's notice, however, that we can triggering some sounds from the pads, which assures us that the kit is well charged in the spark, ready for use. There are two great ways to write down, for example, our bass drum part. The first consists of selecting the bass drum with the select knob, and by pressing on the bass drum pad, we notice that a small light is present here indicating us which pad is selected. Once selected, we can add on the sequencer the steps where we wish to hear the bass drum. We can erase some bass drum by pressing again on the numbers like this. Let's stop the pattern. 
The other way consists in recording the bass drum by playing on the pads at the desired rhythmic spots. This requires a little musical skill but enables to be more reactive and often creative. Let's activate the empty pattern sequence. To have a rhythmic reference, let's activate the metronome by pushing on select plus tap. We now hear the metronome sound with an accent on the first beat, so we don't lose the measure's reference. What I like to do is to practice my bass drum part during the pattern, and once I feel ready, you need to press record and record the bass drum. Note that by default, Spark will quantize automatically your recordings, so don't worry if you play a little offbeat. Spark will take care of quantizing during the recording, even if you're recording several pads at once. We'll see later how to disactivate this automatic quantization if we want to. We can disactivate the metronome now since we got the kick reference. Also, we can disactivate the recording but letting the pattern play in order to practice our snare part located on the second pad. Once we feel ready, we've got to push the record button and record our snare. If we haven't recorded our part as desired, you need to press on Erase, here, and to press on the corresponding pad. By disactivating the record button, we may practice our part again and when we feel ready, once again, you need to click one more time on record and we can start over the recording. Let's add the hi-hats now. Stop the sequence. As we hear, the pads here release 8 different sounds. By pushing the button 18916 here, we got 8 other new sounds that we can use. As we notice, some are bass sounds. We're not limited to percussion sounds with Spark. Let's add a little bass and other synth sounds on our pattern. To create another pattern, you need to select another empty pattern you choose, for example, simply A2, and we can parameter and or record a new pattern. So, we could create 64 patterns. Let's only use two for the example. Now, we can on the fly start the sequencer and go from one pattern to the other as we've understood. We can copy paste a pattern by pushing on select plus erase. We can push on the pattern to be copied and select another place to paste the pattern. The advantage is that on this freshly copied pattern, we can add or and take off some elements in order to create variations in the same rhythmic nature. For example, let's take off the bass drum by selecting the associated pad and by pushing on the sequencer where the bass drums are written or by pushing on Erase and on the corresponding bass drum pad. Let's add a little more bass with pad 6 of the second portion of the 16 pads on this pattern. Now let's have fun in automatizing a little the cutoff frequency of this bass line via this knob.
We notice that the movement is recorded only for this pattern. If we wish to erase our automation, again, you need to click on the Erase button and to turn the potentiometer managing the automation. If we want to hear our pattern with another kit, you need to push on the big button here for one second, then when change kit is clearly apparent, we can surf among the kits. When we wish to use one of them, you have to push the button to validate. Obviously, the sound's nature and the layout of the various kits pads may provide varied and surprising results. Let's erase this pattern by pushing on Erase and by selecting this pattern here. If we wish to go from a 16-step pattern to a 32, 48, even 64 steps, you've got to click on Select and browse by these knobs here. Therefore, we may have more or less long patterns. For instance, here with the metronome, we hear the accent after 8 beats, that is the 32 steps, and not after 4 beats, that is 16 steps. Let's record a pattern on 32 steps. Stop the pattern. We can browse through the steps pages by clicking on these buttons. By selecting the various pads, we notice the places where they were recorded on the sequencer. If we click on both of these buttons at once, the backlit display will show on which step page we are located on the sequencer. The accent function here enables to place an accent on certain pad steps in order to dynamize the rhythmic articulation of the patterns. Let's record a pattern with 16th note rolls on a hi-hat and let's place some accents on the hi-hat part. We hear the accents now. The shuffle function here enables to add swing to the groove. This will be particularly audible with a pattern that lets small rhythmic figures be heard successively like 16th note rolls on a hi-hat, for that matter. On the shuffle's right is found the volume knob. We can, of course, speed up or slow down the tempo by changing it here. Furthermore, we can define this tempo by pressing the speed manually on the tab button here. Mute and solo functions are available here. To put some pads in solo, you need to activate the solo function and push on the pads that we want to put in solo. It's the same for the mute function which enables to mute some pads momentarily. So this is the end of this first part on Spark. In the immediate follow-up of the tutorial, we'll see more in detail the advanced functions present on the physical controller, like the FX pad and the loop function and other little details. Later in the training, we'll study the various possibilities typical to the software, as well as its integration in a digital audio workstation such as Cubase.